last year we were first in line, so we thought we'd, we were actually like 10, 15 minutes earlier this year than we were last year. Didn't think we had any competition, and all of a sudden, some, somebody got here at quarter to four. We're like, what? I got out of the car and I could smell the grilling. That's when you know summer's coming, when you can smell the brats grilling. Why do you tailgate? Because you're getting together with your friends, you have great food, I mean, it's not even a pastime, it's sort of an art form. Because when I watch what, what people set up at, at Miller Park, got better food than sometimes you see at Thanksgiving. But that goes back to community. And it's Wisconsin, it's kind of what we do. <laughs> Sheboygan being the entity that it is, it's, it's this self-enclosed little place, and, and because of that, the traditions have, have stuck with us, especially the food traditions. Back then, every town had a butcher shop. This is a German farming community. The kids up here spoke German before they spoke English. I mean, that's where our plants are. But this is Johnsonville. I mean, you know, this was a farm. Now it's just a house. Oh, here's a... Our old factory, there's Johnsonville Fire Department right across the street, the volunteer fire department. Here's Locks Hall. This is it. That's the end of Johnsonville. From there to there. Okay, let's talk about bratwurst for a minute. I've heard it called soul food for, for this part of the country. It's sort of like a, like a deep dish pizza or a Philly cheese steak or anybody else that's got that one food that they really identify with. The story I've always heard is it originated over in Germany, and that's the extent of what I know. Our family eats it religiously, something that you just have to have. It's a, it tastes like a bratwurst. It's a great tasting sausage. Honestly, I don't, I don't try to explain it. It's not a hot dog. It's not a Polish sausage. It's something you just have to try. Sausage back then, a lot of people thought sausage was a great place to get rid of all the scraps. And my dad thought, you know, I'm going to use really great meat, and I'm going to make a really great sausage. If I could make a really good bratwurst, I would have, I could make a business. At this same time, after Dad had been developing this bratwurst, there was a fellow named Ed Sinner. And he had a, like a lunch wagon, and he would haul around to auctions. Initial order was 40 pounds of hamburgers and 5 pounds of bratwurst. Six months later, the order was 40 pounds of bratwurst and 5 pounds of hamburgers. And Dad knew he had something. People brought their recipes from Germany. They were prized possessions. They couldn't bring their friends, they couldn't bring their family, they couldn't bring their households but they could bring the recipes because they were easy to transport. And those recipes, even to this day, quite often are not shared with anybody. No, I never verified it, but I was told that uh, the Johnsonville spice blend was under lock and key, and very well could be to this day. What's in the brats? What's in the brats? Yeah, the recipe. I don't know anything, no. I'm playing manager, I have no idea. Does anybody know? Probably Ralph, that's it. <laughs> I remember one day I walked into the spice room and he was mixing them up and he stopped because he didn't want anybody to see what his recipe was. Then I realized well, he's mixing the crown jewel here and time for me to get out of the room. If I had a secret that tasted that dang good, I'd do the exact same thing. Nobody knows the recipe except for the Steyer family. The bratwurst recipe is exactly the same as it was back then. These are the secret spices that I can't show you folks, but I'm gonna turn around and hide them, and I'm gonna mix them all together in this bowl. And so there were two people in the world who knew the bratwurst recipe. Oh, look at that mixing. There we go. Uh, my dad and me. Now there's only one. There we go. We got two different spice companies. I gave one spice company half the formula and the other spice company the other half the formula. Like this. They, uh, the one company sends it to the other company and then they blend the whole thing. And there you have Johnsonville Brats, the finest in the world. There's still only one person in the world who knows what the Bratwurst recipe is. Who's next? Well, I think simple food is what people really crave. They crave simple get-togethers. They crave simple food. They crave taking the, the craziness out of your life. And I think that's one of those things that a brat fry will do for you. You know, you get the ketchup and the mustard and the brats and the potato chips and what you have, a couple of picnic tables and your friends. And that's really all you need. Good conversation and some good food. And so brat fry. Let's right. talk about brat fry. What is a brat fry? What is a brat fry? <laughs> a 
Bribe Fry is legendary here in Sheboygan County. And nowhere else do you call anything a brat fry, um, or even just I'm frying out. You wouldn't never say I'm barbecuing or I'm grilling. You'd always say I'm going to I'm frying out today. But a brat fry is more of a connotation of a celebration, a party, a get together. Whether it be at a, a ballpark or whether whether it be at a picnic or a backyard or a church, it doesn't matter. It's just a reason to get together, to grill out brats and have a good time. Brat in German means fry. So it's just kind of redundant, a brat fry. It is a comfort food. Brat Day here started in 1953. It was the 100th anniversary of Sheboygan becoming a city. And they had six, seven different days. Thursday was Bratwurst Day. And they knew they'd get a good turnout for something like that because everybody eats them. And what they had downtown is they shut down all the streets. They renamed the, the city streets um, Semmelstrasse. The semel is the, the bun that you put the bratwurst on, at least the Sheboygan hard roll. Well, let's have a brat bratwurst day, and we'll have a brat fry outside, and all these people will come into town, and they went from one market to the next one, eating a brat and tasting how it tasted. But what I've heard from people that attended is that they were, as you were driving into town from miles out, you could see there was so much smoke because the, the grills were going for so long and, and so heavily that the whole place was nothing but, but bratwurst smoke. Can you imagine the smell of that? Oh, it'd be fabulous. Then they had a parade and they used to have a, a queen brat. Brat's queen, yeah. Brat queen. <laughs> she rode on a, a car, you know, and had a crown on her head and everything else, a big sign on the, on the car. It was a party. So do you remember first moving out to Johnsonville? Oh, sure. How old were you about? Ah, uh, five. Ralph and I had a very rich childhood. My first official job for Johnsonville was to watch Ralph, which was a real challenge. I don't think Ralph was all that excited about sales early on. He called himself the inside guy and I was the outside girl. Oh, so sausage was everywhere. I mean, it was pork sausage or Italian sausage you could find. There was always sausage in the stores, uh, but nobody had Browers. They had a lot of other guys. You can't sell this down here, boy. We ain't gonna buy this. And they just try it. Just give me a chance. And I got something to give me a chance. And then it sold. And you know how we sold it? We sampled it. I carried two electric frying pans with me all the time. Cutting boards, knives. You could actually take knives on airplanes back then. Toothpicks, tin foil. I had my whole kit. We'll pull up in a Winnebago and we'll serve them breakfast. Now we're flying down these roads at 70 miles an hour. I got three different skillets on this stove. I'm in high heels. I have a new, beautiful silk dress. Uh, and I'm cooking this product up in this traffic. So I just fry them up in my hotel room. When I left, that room smelled like sausage. <laughs> that was the story of the Winnebago. I never could wear that dress again. It was sad. And I told them, if you guys all authorize this product, we will run TV. And we did. Ah. Hi, Charlie. Uh, you, uh, you startled me. What you cooking? Uh, nothing. Hey, those look uh, like Johnsonville brats. No. Come no. on, I know a Johnsonville brat when I see oh, one. They're not Johnsonville. I... They are Johnsonville brats. I love them. You want to talk about Charlie Murphy, do you? <laughs> Who hasn't seen this commercial? <laughs> do you really, don't you know this commercial? I think the Charlie Murphy commercial was... 79? Well, so we get this storyboard, and I'm looking at it, you know, and I took it home to my family and all that. What do you think? Yeah, okay, looks good. Yeah, yeah. That was really our first TV commercial was Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsville Brats. It went viral before social media. You would hear people yelling that when somebody else was cooking it in their backyard. Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsonville Brats! Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsonville Brats! Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsonville Brats! Charlie Murphy's Grilling Johnsonville Brats! Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsonville Brats! Charlie Murphy's Cooking Johnsonville Brats! Brats, Brats! Brats, Brats, Brats! Brats, Brats! You want to get your name in the commercial as many times as possible, you know? So, Johnsonville Brats! Johnsonville Brats! You get the echo about four or five times across the lake. Could you come back tomorrow? Tomorrow, please. Oh, please don't do that. Charlie Murphy's cooking Johnson the Is mine okay? That's kind of how I remember it. 
<laughs> when you're good, word gets around fast. And uh, that was the commercial. And we ran that commercial for years. No one believed that this small company would run advertising. And we said, we won. And then we'd show them the TV commercial. It's kind of hokey, but yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> and I'm like, it works. And that was a great original idea. This was a home run. This was like, like the earth moved commercial. Johnsonville Brockwurst. When it's the best, word gets around fast. My dad and mom live here in Milwaukee. They saved their money and they bought a little butcher shop in Johnsonville in 1945. My dad started around the picnics up there and he would look in the garbage barrels and he'd see all these broths laying there with only one bite taken out of them. He thought, if I can make a good broth, I can make a good business. People know when you're, when you're real about something and you really believe in the product and what you're doing. And that, that sincerity, it's our people. They all care about what's going on. And, uh, I, and that's just, that's part of a culture. You wanna be part of this family, you gotta, you gotta be part of a family and a business. And my sister Lana, and she'd go to see these uh, retailers. What's a brat? <laughs> what's a brat? And it was, what's a brat? It, it, you know, no, it's a brat. It's not a brat, it's a brat. The brat, that's my brother Ralph. <laughs> Don't ever call it a brat. It's a brat. You know, people put lots of different things on their, their brat. I'm not a ketchup and mustard person, so I, it's like my, I like to be able to taste the meat that you're eating. I like ketchup, mustard, and onion, and the mustard has to be a dark mustard. It can't be a yellow mustard. Pickles, onions, and the mustard, it's, and, and a little butter on the bun. And I put them on a Sheboygan hard roll. Beauty of a Sheboygan hard roll, actually, it fits two brats just perfectly. I will tell you the best thing to put on a brat. What's that? Your teeth. <laughs> 